What is going on, guys? Wiser here, and I'm bringing you the recap of the last war for 2.0. Uh, I was against this Chinese farming clan. Uh, was not a heck of a lot of adversity in this war. Uh, they used maybe half their attacks. So just going to flip right over and kind of show you what happened. 71 to 43, huge victory over these guys. Like I said, 31 to 50 attacks they only used. So nothing too special. Uh, we did a fantastic job. The only one we seem to come a little short on, Moose had a 76%. Uh, one star on their number two. Uh, other than that, cleared the board. I do have a TH10 triple in there from uh, our newer tens, who's really rocking it for us south fence, uh, and cleared all the way down. So I'm gonna start do something a little different than what I'm used to. I usually start at the top and kind of work my way down to the bottom, but um, we are gonna start pretty much at the bottom here and show you these bottom few very common form bases and some very Creative way, uh, creative ways to uh, to get this done. So uh, I love showing Kev's attacks because he's really only 16, 15 heroes, right? I think you guys can relate to hitting a base like this um, a lot, a lot more well than uh, than some of those anti three stars, those top anti three stars that we end up facing as well. Um, so Kev goes ahead, brings a max attack. Really like the earthquake placement. He's just opening up uh, those two air defense, opening up the spot for uh, to get in at that queen. Creates a nice, nice, huge funnel. King goes in after the golems. Poison goes down to help take care of, uh, not only is like double duty on the poison because they're taking care of the CC troops and the queen. <clears throat> King's in there doing work. Queen's down. They're working on that king. Uh, uh, the uh, His queen takes out that dragon finally. Just needs to take care of that other air defense and their job is done. Up come some skellies too, just to kind of slow things down. Um, goes in before that air defense goes down. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, something you got to do guys when they're level six air defense like this, if you can get your balloons in on top of them very quickly, uh, you don't necessarily need, like I always said, that general rule of thumb is having one lava helm more than remaining air defenses. You don't necessarily need that. Like I have a feeling Kev could have got away here with only two lava hounds. Sometimes you don't want to take that risk, but as you can see, he has two lava hounds that are unburst and loons are coming right on top of that air defense. Maybe you did. I don't know. But as you can see, down goes that air defense. Still has those hounds on burst. Loons are just kind of moving in on the remaining uh, defenses that target air, which is good. Archer Tower is going down. The only thing he's got to worry about is that Wiz Tower. But that balloon makes its way over. Drops a bomb. See you later, Wiz Tower. And see you later, form base. <clears throat> nice job, Kev. Fearless leader in action with his 16, 15 heroes. I love it. Nice max attack, buddy. Probably could have got away with two lab hounds. I have my real mug today. See, when we went to Disney World, I got to pick a mug, and my wife got to pick a mug. So that princess one was actually her mug, wasn't my mug. <clears throat> All right, jump one up. Here's feathers. Oh, here's my other kitty. <clears throat> so another very, very uh, typical. Symmetrical form base here. Feather Springs a kind of a cool attack here. Um, I was initially wondering what he was doing because he zap quakes this air defense, but then go, proceeds to go in on this side. Now, if I were doing this attack, I would have done everything the same because you want to go in on the queen side. I might have shifted my entry a little bit down and kind of came in from this corner and jumped in between those air defense. And I'm pretty sure the kill squad would have gotten both air defense on that side and the queen, regardless of the zap quake. And then he could have used a zap quake on one of those backside air defenses. And then you could have taken uh, one last lava hound. Uh, just a thought there, Feathers. How do you critique a three-star, though? You just rock this base. Um, your heroes, obviously, your queen's getting up there too, right? So uh, not quite as impressive as Kev's 16, 15 heroes in there. Uh, still impressive nonetheless, though. As you can see, Queen's in there doing worse. Finally locks onto that dragon. Takes down the dragon. Moving in. Air defense is down. The Queen is down. Their job's basically done, right? So he goes ahead and starts the deployment of his Lava Hounds. Um, first one goes in from 12. Really good spread on that. Soaks up a bomb. Uh, loons in on the Arch Tower. Uh, another bomb gets soaked up right away by that full health Lava Hound. So that's really good. Gonna, he's going to have two of those Lava Hounds over top there uh for a very long time. Air defense is already down though, and he still has not even, he probably could have just got, I think he does. Does he swag this lava hound? No, he doesn't. 
He probably could have got away with it, though, because he has a bunch of balloons coming in. Uh, maybe not, because uh, I bet you could have swagged that Lava Hound, too. Uh, those level, the, the level six air defense guys, more often than not, you could probably skimp on a Lava Hound uh, and just bring extra balloons, especially if um, you'll see it in the next attack, actually. Uh, if you can drop some hastes or... If there's only like one defense, like if they're kind of poor uh, def uh, locations um, for the air defense that you can get balloons in right away, right on top of them quickly, you could probably uh, get away with one last lap of hand. So nice job, Feathers. Nice little attack. Fairly creative. <clears throat> Look at that. Five Earthquake, two Lightning. Love that. I, I love the spell choice there. That's, that's kind of what made me want to show this. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Rhett and 22. Good old Nammers. So, another very uh, typical base. Uh, again, there, there's all, all variations of these kinds of bases, but uh, notice these are all uh, Laloon attacks. Uh, this one, Nams uh, decides to go in uh, with a cold blooded entry, just one goal. Uh, is very patient, kind of lets everything. Uh, develop here, takes out that. Golem's going to reroute back up to that uh, Tesla. King goes in on the uh, Elixir Storage breadcrumb and is right in there for that queen. Uh, see his queen kind of takes a bit of a hike. That's a result of the cold-blooded entry because you cannot take out as many uh, trash buildings on the outside. So this queen's kind of sticking around on the outside until some of this stuff goes down. I believe she reroutes. Oh, she gets locks on that dragon and kind of gets sucked. No, 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 I am completely wrong. She stays down there, but their job's done, right? The uh, CC is taken care of. Uh, unfortunately, that Tesla does not go down, uh, but with the cold-blooded entry, what that allows him to do, uh, he still only brings three Lava Hounds. So this is a great example of what I was just talking about, but he has all these hastes. He had seven hastes that he's just going to drop in a horseshoe around the base and pushes these balloons onto these air defense so quickly. The level six air defense just are not enough to take down the Lava Hounds fast enough. So um, fantastic read on that, Nams. I love uh, when guys decide to bring, uh, you know, kind of skimp out on a Lava Hound, bring some extra balloons because you know your balloons are going to get in there. Another point is the grounded expos. Uh, when you see grounded expos, I generally lean towards Laloon. Um, I know someone uh, from North Remembers doesn't doesn't agree with me on this point, but uh, as soon as I see grounded expos, you know your Lava Hounds are going to live that much longer, so you can almost always opt uh, for one less Lava Hound in your attacks, right? Um, especially on a base with level 6 air defense and grounded expos, you do not need that extra Lava Hound. So Nams really shows his stuff here that... He knows his defenses and knows his layouts and it's tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Nammers. All right, so that is that. I'm going to show Andrew's sweet hit on their top nine. So this is a little more uh, of a... I'm pretty sure I've seen this base too. This base is copied from somewhere. Uh, it is... Not symmetrical, so that's a good thing. Uh, but Andrew just picks this base apart with the six Valk uh, shattered entry here. Goes ahead and creates the funnel. Queen goes down. <clears throat> you know, this guy's got uh, pretty much, yeah, this guy has max heroes, right? So this is a max Town Hall 9 here, right? Like nothing left for this guy to do other than go up to Town Hall 10 at this point. Uh, so Andrew really comes in, you know, with a slightly lower level heroes. Um, but that doesn't matter guys, just cause the base has max here doesn't, doesn't mean that, you know, your 25 or even your 2020 heroes, uh, can't take it down. Um, with great deployment, like Andrew does here, this base doesn't stand a chance. Poisons are down. Uh, even the poison over the queen. I like the, I like when you can get double duty and the poison goes down on the queen cause she does do for, a, a at least for the amount of time that she's alive. Like if she locks onto one of your golems. If you don't take her down within, you know, 10 seconds of her locking onto your golem, she's going to do some serious, especially a level 30 queen. So as you see, all those Valks are in there. Sends in Hogs to kind of help them out. Uh, make sure, uh, you're, I've talked about this before, follow the Valks. It's like follow the, you know, I call it a game called follow the Valks, like follow the leader. And you're going to start sending in Hogs just to protect them to give them time to break through a few walls and continue on with the raid. Uh, so the Hogs are doing just that. Couple hogs down on that cannon there. This golem is over here doing tanky on that expo. I thought that was great because he only has two hogs standing on this expo doing work. Eventually it's gonna go down. 
Arch Tower is going to go down, and the last defenses are down. <laughs> Even the, the DGB in there uh, only takes a couple hogs with it. You can see those Valks still up there doing work, busted through that wall, but it doesn't matter. Very nice hit, Andrew. Sexy Tree Star in the bag. Beauty. All right. And last but very not least, self fence is beautiful hit here. Very, very typical ring style. Um, Town Hall 10 base. Uh, you know, when you're in farming wars, these bases uh, turn out pretty good. Because when a lot of people are bringing go wipes, um, think about how a go wipe works. Well, A, your golems target defenses. B, your pekkas target any building, period. <clears throat> so why this base works against go wipes is because uh, most people will just break in onto a side and try and jump into the core. But the way the moat works is it's going to yank all of your golems generally and all of your pekkas to the outside and just kind of walk in the ring around the town hall and they're not going to get the town hall. However, once uh, <laughs> when you're getting hit by a guy named South Fence or anyone who's got uh, some TH10 triple experience, this is perfect because you can do what he did here. He really did want to get this air defense with that queen. Uh, I know that was uh, that was part of his plan. However, at this point, he does have one air defense, the defensive queen down. If he had got that other air defense, this base would have just got completely smashed. It does anyways because he still still has that uh, quad lalo, two uh, uh, two lava hounds on each horse or. Uh, Kind of horseshoe ring of haste here. Going to push everything around. So the, the key to the deployment here, guys, is taking down, like I was saying, taking down the defenses on either side so the huge big group of loons has nowhere else to go except to the defenses in the core, right? If he had just kind of sent everything from this side, they would have started walking around. But he deployed from 10 o'clock and basically 2 o'clock at the same time so that all the balloons kind of met up in the core over top of those infernos. Does almost lose a big chunk of loons. Gets a perfect burst on that uh, second last Lava Hound. But see what I mean? He didn't even get that air defense and still has a Lava Hound on burst. So just absolutely ripped this base apart. Nice job, self fence. <coughs> this poses a little bit of issue because boom, there goes his Lava Hound. Starts taking on some balloons. But doesn't matter. He's got enough pups on the back end to take them out. Three. Stars in the bag to the trees. If any of you ever remember uh, the original Robin Hood, not the one with uh, Russell Crowe, but the one with Kevin Costner. Um, some of you might be uh, a little young to even remember that Robin Hood, but <laughs> what a great movie that was. Just that one line in the, in the movie. Was, oh, to the trees. <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe I'm going a little loopy this morning. Um, yeah, so nice war 2.0. Just crush these guys. Um, hopefully uh, our next one, which is starting later this evening, uh, provides a little more adversity. Uh, we do have Invicta taking on Crystal Warrior this weekend, so that is awesome. Uh, and ta on top of it, uh, generally when we have uh, arranged matchups, anyone in said clan that uh, isn't participating in the arranged matchup will go to another clan. So right now we got... Um, a surge of guys in 2.0 uh, for our next war. So we got a 35 man war in 2.0 starts tonight. And like I said, crystal warrior for Invicta, that should <laughs> provide some amazing content. Good luck, gentlemen. Uh, I am going to call it an afternoon. I got to go get ready for work. So that'll do it for your wisdom from wiser. Just trying to help you bag that next three star. And until then I'm out.